Hello, it's Alex here. Welcome to my channel. We're going to talk today about the Manchester Sewing Bee and also about the dress that I made to wear. The uh, Manchester Sewing Bee happened on Saturday. Uh, Adele, who is Button and Pip here on YouTube, she already vlogged like within less than 24 hours about it, so she's way more advanced than I am. As far as I'm concerned, it was a great success. It's the first time that it happened. It's the first time that I've organized any kind of sewing meetups, um, but it went really, really well. I did have some help from Amy, who uh, is at Normal Kitchen on Instagram. Amy helped me with writing to people for um, donations, for raffle prizes. Um, but it was nice to know that uh, I can still organize things um i don't know if i've mentioned this before but in a pre-child life i used to work in advertising i was a uh, producer i used to produce tv commercials so um i was used to putting together big film shoots uh, but obviously that was a long time ago the venue that we used was the offices of a design agency called space zero they very kindly allowed the, us to use that space um my husband's the creative director there um but their space was absolutely perfect for us because it was all open plan so we could all be together uh amy and another lady called jane very kindly brought some homemade cakes along so there were cakes and um, we had a pattern swap we had a fabric swap and we also uh, had a pop-up fabric shop the ladies from lulu designs came we had an amazing number of uh, raffle prizes i think there were 27 different companies that donated and some of those were a number of prizes so that was fabulous and um so i spent the morning selling raffle tickets and people were fabulous amazingly generous lots of people bought lots of tickets so we spent the morning sewing and then at lunchtime we went off to abacans we negotiated a discount there on the day it's it's about a sort of 10 15 minute walk from where we were i did feel a little bit like a school teacher sort of at the front you know leading everybody off to abacans but um it was great some people had never been there before debbie who is the manager of abacans in manchester told me that one of the members of staff came and found her in the office and said she thought that a coach party had arrived anyway it was us so that was really nice people then milled off and got their own lunch did whatever they wanted and then we carried on sewing in the afternoon and until about four o'clock when we called the raffle um which took quite a long time with that many prizes and uh it was great because a lot of people ended up winning prizes so that was really nice and um i'm gonna put a list below of all the people that sponsored because i think it's incredibly generous nearly all of them are independent companies and i know they get asked all the time for this sort of thing and um you know that must be quite hard when you're running a small business so it really really is appreciated um we were raising money for prevent breast cancer which is one of the very few charities worldwide that researches into the prevention of breast cancer not the cure and um I think that's possibly why people were so generous, A, with supporting us on the day with raffle tickets, uh, but also with uh, companies donating because um, an awful lot of people had first hand or indirect experience of breast cancer. Um, so it was an incredibly worthwhile cause. And I just want to say thank you very much to everybody who gave a prize and everybody that came and bought raffle tickets because by the end of the day, we had raised £687, which, considering there were 36 of us, is amazing. And then Space Zero, who, as I say, were hosting us in their offices, were uh, amazing and have said they will match whatever we make on the day. So that means in total, we've donated £1,300 something pounds to prevent breast cancer so i think we can all say we did a good deed that day it was absolutely brilliant um there were still people that i didn't really get to talk to i was just too busy so um it, the time just flew by it was so nice to go to and everybody was so friendly it was a lovely atmosphere we had people of all sorts of ages we had people who were complete beginners or people who were more advanced 
Um, it was really good. It was really lovely to have Sam and Lucy from Lulu Designs with us because having a fabric shop um, with us on the day meant we could all go and have a feel of the fabrics, which of course you can't do online. Um, and they brought some patterns and they have those lovely Atelier brunette buttons and bits and pieces. And um, yeah, that was really, really good to go and, yeah, mostly to go and have a feel of it all because, you know, that is the downside, isn't it, of buying online. I treated myself to a few things. Um, I bought, they were selling metre and a half lengths of their jersey and I bought some in this teal colour. This is fresh out of the tumble dryer. I don't know whether it's supposed to go in the tumble dryer, but I'm going to make a top out of it. It'll end up in the dryer at some point. So, um, and this, they do this in loads of different colours. So um, I'm really pleased to have found this because now that girl Charlie aren't in the UK anymore, um, I now know I can go somewhere else for some really good plain jerseys. And I also treated myself to this tensile in cider colour. And I've also got some coming in the sand colourway and I've got plans to make something with the two of them together. I'll show you when I get it done. It's nice to treat yourself occasionally, isn't it? So, um, God, it feels so nice. So I bought those. I also bought, but haven't got yet, a really amazing fabric, which is uh, green, but it's got like a sort of pinky mauve in it and it's got leopards on. And uh, it sold out on the day. So I got to see it on the day. Somebody else had some um, and they've got some more coming in this week. So I've ordered it and it's coming later in the week. So yeah, it was really lovely to have fabric there on on site as it were. Um, they are also planning in the next little while to do a, um, to have their own swatch club. So they very kindly let me have a little sneak peek of their Swatch Club uh, box, which I've got here. Um, so when they let me know a little bit more how it's all gonna work, I will come back and tell you about it. But nice, lovely fabrics. Anyway, all in all, I think we had a great day. I think everybody enjoyed themselves, whether they'd come with friends or they walked through the door knowing nobody. And we tried to make it as friendly as possible. Um, so yeah, it was fabulous and I've, Hopefully I've thanked everybody that played a part in it. Um, yeah, it was really good. And I've even got to thank my husband because he gave up his Saturday to go and sit in his own office. Um, but bless him. I wore a dress that I'd made the week before. I said that I'd got a meal coming up in London. We went to London weekend before last and um, I'd made the dress for that. In this fabric here that I bought from fabric godmother which now i realize it's quite a bold print and i know that's not for everyone but um i really love this print i feel it's got a bit of a mid-century feel and i absolutely love that so I bought it from fabric godmother it's a viscose crepe it's quite delicate i i'm still getting to grips with all the different types of viscose um it's really lovely it's not flimsy but it feels almost silky and what i found with it was that it kind of bruised quite easily so there are lots of gathers in this pattern and i soon realized that i couldn't do the method where you have a lot of running big running stitches either side of the seam allowance because when i was pulling the stitches on the dress side of the seam allowance it was not only pulling the fibres, but also um, kind of bruising the the print or the colour. So I realised I couldn't do that. So I only had one row of stitches on the seam allowance side and then just sort of manually encouraged it along. And that worked quite well. Uh, the pattern is a French sewing pattern and it doesn't come with English instructions. And as we have just discussed before, I don't speak a word of French, so um, when I decided, I think I've shown it to you previously, it's, it's been on my kind of list of things I want to make. And I had a look at it and I thought, if I can't make head nor tail of the instructions when I run them through Google Translate, could I um, conceivably work it out myself? And I decided I could. 
So, um, but I did start off with using the Google Translate method, which brought up some interesting translations. Um, and I start with those instructions up until sort of the end of the bodice part. I actually took the dress with me to a sewing day in Chester, which is run by Ellie, the messy seamstress, and uh, met a few really lovely people there, including Lindsay, who has a YouTube channel, which is called, I think, Stitch Create Love. I'll put a title. Um, and she's only just started on YouTube, so it's worth going and checking her out because she's really lovely. But everybody there was fab. But about halfway through the day, I realised that I hadn't cut the right pieces. So I had to leave halfway through and go home and finish the dress off there. I did OK Google with Google Translate and looking at the diagrams. But the diagrams, I feel, could be a little bit better. They're great at showing you the step by step instructions. But what they don't really do I feel is show you how the individual parts are supposed to look at the end when you've constructed it. So the main thing that I couldn't understand what they were trying to get at was the um, because the top has a sort of drapey blues on uh, effect, your side zip runs from the waistband down and doesn't go up into the top. but in order to be able to get the dress on, you have an opening on the side seam with an internal flap, which then, uh, so you're not flashing yourself, which then attaches inside to the waistband with a loop and a button. So there's my side seam. That's the waistband. The zip comes down from there. And then on the top part, the bodice, you've got a flap and the button there. Um, so obviously, eventually I worked out that's what was being required, um, but it took a bit of head scratching. But once I worked that out, the rest of it was pretty straightforward. I did make a few changes. Um, the sleeves, it comes with all sorts of different variations. Um, I did want to have um, the kind of more draped sleeve and I think it's designed to have a very narrow cuff on it but to be honest I just went elasticated because actually I prefer to wear elasticated and also it's easier to do. I really like this tie detail. They had it so that you put your yoke on on the inside and obviously on the outside and then they had a bias binding along this neck edge going into the tie and I thought that actually by using the burrito method there was no need to do that and it would look a bit less cumbersome so that's what I did and it worked really well just the same as you would if you were making a um, button-up shirt. I did a side split and I used French seams for it throughout because of the delicate nature of the fabric, which worked really well. Didn't do it on the side seam where I've got my zip and also the split because I haven't yet worked out how you go from a French seam into a split. I'm sure there's a way, but I haven't worked it out yet. So that seam I overlocked. And if I'm honest, it does look like a bit of a dog's dinner. Um, so maybe one day I'll go back and neaten it all up. Um, it just could look nicer, but I didn't want the inner side of the split to just be overlocked. So I did just make a bit of bias binding. So you see, look, there's my zip with sort of some very unattractive overlocking. And then I did some bias binding along that into the split at the side. Yeah, I really, really like the pattern. I'm really happy with the dress and hallelujah, I've got something I can actually wear. Um, it's an incredibly versatile pattern, so I'll definitely be making blouse versions of it. And the other thing that I did was I made a belt to go with it. I had bought one of these belt making kits from Amazon and the actual buckle part of it is really straightforward. 
um, it basically comes with a template which is a bit like double-sided tape so you stick it onto your fabric cut around the template peel another layer off and stick it on the belt on the front belt and then you squeeze in the back section job done um, the thing that I found really difficult is getting the um, well two things one getting the belt to sit straight so a lot of the time it was kind of on the wonk and that's because I sewed up the um, I fixed it up on the inside around here-ish and really in order to keep that straight you want to be able to sew a line of stitches down there now obviously you can't get that under your machine so that needs to be hand stitched but I know that for next time uh, but the other thing you can see here very unattractive is the eyelet so you obviously need to make a hole in the fabric here for the um, prong to come through and the first time I did it the eyelet just pinged off so I opened up the belt and put more interfacing in just to make it a bit thicker and that did work reasonably well in that it is still there but can you see it's kind of yeah it's not great it's half off and half on um, and yeah I just think it just looks a bit amateurish to me so I need to kind of figure out how to get that looking a bit better and yeah I need to just run a couple of hand stitches along along here um, but I do like how it looks with the belt so I'm pleased that I did that all in all I can report back that it's been a really successful week uh, both with my dress and with the sewing bee and um, I have to admit I'm gonna have a bit of a sewing break now because I was absolutely exhausted after Saturday I'm going to London later on this week because a very good friend of mine has had her first ever book published and she's having her book launch so uh, wild horses couldn't keep me away from going to that so I'm going to go to that and I'm also going to catch up with some other London friends that I haven't seen in a really long time so I'm really looking forward to having a bit of time out with some really good old friends and have a bit of time away from sewing but I suspect by the weekend I'll be dying to get back on my machine so that's it from me I will just say because she's my friend if you fancy a good read go and get Nicola's new book it's called The Neighbours and she's Nicola Gill I'm sure she would really appreciate it blatantly pro promoting my friend's book but you would wouldn't you um so thank you very much uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe. If you click the bell, you'll get reminders. I remembered. Thank you very much, everybody who came to the Manchester Sewing Bee. Thank you very much to all the sponsors. And thank you very much for watching. I'll be back soon. Bye.